KBLA Talk 1580, fighting the power every doggone day. <laughs> I'm so excited to have in the studio with me the executive director of the LA Civil Rights Department. Uh, she is the founding executive director of said department. Its real full name is Los Angeles Civil Plus Human Rights and Equity Department. Uh, she was appointed by former Mayor Garcetti to the position in 2020 to address systemic racism and bias in the areas of commerce, education, employment, and housing. Uh, previously, uh, before that, she was senior advisor to the city attorney, uh, Mike Fuhr, creating the Foster Care Diversion Program, among many other projects. Attorney Capri Maddox, welcome back. So good to be with you, Dominique. Yeah, great to have you in. Uh, we have a lot to cover People, I hope, our KBLA delegation is familiar with L.A. Civil Rights Department by now. Yes. Um, but it's a relatively new, obviously, 2020, and it is, you're blazing a trail. I mean, this is seems to be catching on in other cities, having a department to address all of these areas of inequity and discrimination. Right. Uh, Dominique, just like uh, KBLA, uh, we're relatively new. We're not perfect, but we're not playing. And we are intentional <laughs> to make a difference uh, in the city of Los Angeles and to make the moment. Um, when you think about 2020, uh, biggest civil rights um, moment in my lifetime. And um, often I thought about the past. And um, some people in my age group may have thought, oh, they may have missed the civil rights movement. Well, it's here alive and well, and we are fighting for not only our, our country, but fighting for a better Los Angeles, one that's free of hate, discrimination, and inequities. And that's what we're doing at LA Civil Rights. I want to thank you for um, honoring me. That was so fun. It was such yes. a uh, really awesome event uh, at City Hall. Um, and, you know, also just honoring black women and journalists. Wow, that was um, unusual and cool, and I really appreciated it. You know, it was different. Right, and it was truly an honor uh, to have you with us. We also uh, honored Angel Jennings yes. from LA Times, and uh, just in, and actually uh, two gentlemen from Channel 35, our beloved city uh, channel. And I, I want you to know that uh, your voice and your platform really makes a difference, and uh, especially in, in, in tough times, even when we had the tapes come out, um, you know, yeah. with hate and yeah. discrimination even happening within, you know, city council chambers, um, you know, uh, with folks that worked in at the time in L.A. City Council Chambers. So we really appreciate KBLA being there for us, um, you know, thinking about what's happening overseas and all the challenges uh, that we're facing in Washington, D.C. Uh, your voice means so much uh, to me, and I'm a regular listener. I appreciate the support from day one. Also, I had never had the opportunity to meet Angel Jennings. Of course, I've read her stuff, uh, so that was fun. And the guys, uh, the guys from Channel Thirty Five, mm -hmm. um, Seabrum. I'm sorry. I uh, believe it was uh, Seabrum yeah. and another gentleman. So very, very grateful. The guys behind the cameras that we always see we at surprised. city events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was awesome. That was really nice. So um, we have talked about this, the hate crimes. 
and this mission of ending discrimination, fighting hate crimes, fighting for equity and putting an equity lens on everything the city is doing. But one thing we haven't really talked as much about is the teeth behind the um, initiatives of anti-discrimination. Because you guys do LA is for everyone shirts and you have round tables and you have a TV show and you do all these things to bring people together. You do everything on the prevention side, but there is also an enforcement side. Exactly. And there are times when education and outreach and celebrating everyone's culture uh, is appreciated. Uh, but uh, as the good book teaches us, there's a time for everything under the sun. And sometimes it's time to do enforcement. And um, I'm privileged to uh, be a licensed attorney, and we are able to bring cases against folks that violate your civil rights in the areas of commerce, education, employment, and housing. And we want to be intentional to uh, say that hate has no home in Los Angeles and, you know, fighting hate crimes. But we also want to be intentional to say discrimination um, will not be tolerated in Los Angeles. And that is why we are able to bring cases against folks that violate your civil rights, again, in the areas of commerce, education, employment, housing. And I want to give a big shout out to Senator Lola Smallwood Pavis, who really led the charge for us to have a civil rights ordinance in the city of Los Angeles. Um, The civil rights ordinance is only a few years old, only since 2019. And her work when she was at the Black Worker Center really made the difference uh, for us to be able to have this work uh, happen at LA Civil Rights. So that it wouldn't have to go automatically to the state or the federal level. <clears throat> when you're talking about being discriminated against right. as a worker, as a business person or, or whatever area you might be, normally we would have had to go to a state board or go to the federal um, employment um, discrimination body. But now because of this ordinance, 2019, there's actually a city body for that. Yes. Which is you. Yes. <laughs> and we had our first notice of violation recently. But um, before I, we talk about that, I just want to let folks know that if you are a victim of discrimination in the city of Los Angeles, you can reach out to our department uh, and let us know uh, what you're dealing with and know that you may not have to deal with it alone. And even if our department can't take your case, we want to be intentional to make sure that you know there's no wrong door. It's not a waste of time to call us, particularly if you've been if your rights have been violated in the private sector areas of commerce, education, employment, and housing within the last three years and the um, incident happened in the city of Los Angeles. Um, that's th- These are things that folks need to know about another resource. And working with us does not preclude their um, – their you know fight for justice in other settings so you can still hire a private attorney you can still uh, use other uh, remedies uh, government public interest law etc okay so I would imagine if they call and it's not the right spot you probably refer people right how how You guys must be getting all kinds of calls. Yes. So our phones are ringing a lot more lately since we announced our first notice of violation. But I want to let you know that um, as we move uh, in in these spaces, we have a great partnership with California Civil Rights, uh, working with folks at the EEOC. I want to be intentional to let you know, even today, there's a roundtable event happening at Bet Zedek Legal Services with other service providers and government entities to figure out how the whole of government with the whole of uh, legal aid operations can really make a difference for residents. So working collaboratively with those state and federal agencies and um, whatever other resources are available to bring justice to bear. That's amazing. If people do want to reach out, how do they do it? Well, first of all, you can find us at www. LA is for everyone dot com. And you can also reach us by phone 213-978-1845. 
Uh, you can also follow us on social media platforms at L.A. Civil Rights as well, at L.A. Civil Rights. All right, we're going to find out about this notice of violation, find out about what's happening with all these calls. I mean, it's I imagine it's pretty overwhelming. We're a big old city with a lot of stories. Um, we're talking with attorney Capri Maddox, who is over L.A. Civil Rights. Yes, it's a thing. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. Say the quiet part out loud. loud. KBLA Talk 1580. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzy. Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzy. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzy, there's nothing on my skin. And that means everything. your doctor today about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit SkyRizzy.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZY to learn more. Are you wet shaven? You'll get razor bumps. Nah, pops. I'm good with Gillette Skin Guard. How long you been growing that beard? Mama hates anyway. <laughs> Since 77. I shaved and got ingrown so bad. That's why I use the Gillette Skin Guard razor, face scrub, shave gel, and moisturizer. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? <laughs> Your mama's gonna love this one. <laughs> <laughs> the best a man can get keeps getting better with Gillette Skin Guard. Buy now at a retailer near Hi, you. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. Thanks for waking up with Dominique De Prima on KBLA Talk 1580. Do appreciate you, and you're welcome to hop in the chat if you want to see us. We're on YouTube.com, KBLA 1580, and they are chatting away as usual. You can also call 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. I'm joined by attorney Capri Maddox, who is over the L.A. Civil Rights Department. And um, you guys, as you said, you have made the news beyond KBLA <laughs> because of this discrimination case. Um, a business being fined, being yes. held accountable for violating anti-discrimination laws. Tell me the story of this case. How did this come to pass? So we had a, uh, a complaining party, uh, African-American male, went into a smart and final store he was a regular customer and he was asked to leave his bag at the front of the store pretty much uh, commonly known as a bag check policy by an operation a security services company and the gentleman decided that he did not want to leave his bag at the front desk um, so he took his bag home he had sensitive papers in his bag so he took his bag home dropped it off came back to the store and he then noticed that non-African Americans were walking around freely with uh, similar backpacks and bags. He asked some of the customers, hey, why didn't you leave your bag at the front? Um, you know, bag check policy, and you, you're supposed to leave your bag at the front. And they said, oh, we didn't know there was a bag check policy. No one stopped us, no one said anything. He had the presence of mind to take pictures of folks walking around the store with their bags. and. We 
um, were contacted he uh, by an, a community-based organization um, and and the gentleman was able to actually file a claim against um, smart and final and that case really um, sent shock waves uh, not only through the business community but throughout the business community but also sent a message to folks in Los Angeles that we will fight for you. It doesn't have to be a major, major case or something that's happened for years and years and years. But as African Americans and uh, other uh, marginalized communities know, you may have gone into a store and um, been given different treatment. And this is something that a lot of people um, felt and were pleased to know that we were holding people accountable in these spaces. I want to let you also know that the we have subpoena power. We can pull videos. Um, we have a number of resources within our purview to make sure that hate has no home in Los Angeles, but discriminatory practices will not be tolerated even by businesses in the private sector. So the... The complaining party, as you call him, the guy who was discriminated against, yes. um, goes to a goes to a local organization with his story, and that organization connects him with you. Yes, and you guys file uh, a complaint. Is that how it yes, is? Yes, 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 and, um, and we we have a wonderful uh, system that's you know set up uh, we have two you know great people that are leading this work and uh, when we think about discrimination enforcement we have uh, Kim Kasraylevich that uh, runs our discrimination enforcement civil rights enforcement section and we also have a great community outreach partnership with Jamana Celia Saba and the last person I want to mention is our lead investigator, um, Lillian Calderon, that has um, the resources and the skills uh, with her team of five investigators. And it's a small operation, but we are small and, and mighty in all that we do at LA Civil Rights. So you'll take so com the investigation comes first, I imagine, then the complaint. Mm, yes, of course. And, and yeah, the for, first you'll have the. Um, the complaint come in and then we'll make a basic uh, investigation just to get an idea of whether or not this is a case we can take and it, we, we have our jurisdiction boundaries of course uh, one thing I should let folks know it has to happen within the city of Los Angeles the four items city of Los Angeles uh, happened within the last three years uh, involving the private sector, areas of commerce, education, employment, housing, and be a protected class um, violation. So we want to make sure that folks are in the protected class. So if those are the four items that you can check off, that's when you really want to make sure that you call us or even email us your complaint. Uh, you can email us your complaint at cre at lacity.org, cre at lacity.org if you wish to email us to tell us about uh, a violation that's happened to you. So this team that you have goes on goes then into a little bit more of an in-depth investigation. Yes. Um, and then what's the process? In this case, uh, there ended up being a, a fine against Smart and Final and a fine against um, one of their contractors, a security company, yes. that made that choice to discriminate against the black man in the store. Yes. Um, is there... Is there a negotiation that happens first, or it's just like, boom, fine? So, no, well, there is a negotiation. There is a, a process. And by the way, I want to say that uh, some the cases can settle at any time with uh, support um, from the complaining partner as well as uh, the folks that may be in violation if they agree. We, folks can settle at any time. And also, I also offer mediation services uh, for our victims, as well as uh, the the uh, companies that are involved in these uh, instances. When you think about it, um, this is a, an expense and something I should brag on is that Pepperdine School of Law, my beloved alma mater, and I know you had a Dean uh, Shellac Richards uh, Guinness on air just uh, last week, but great partner. We have um, MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with Pepperdine School of Law, and you know that you know, they have one of the best mediation programs in the entire country, and they settled uh, 20 cases for us. Uh, but in this instance, the complaining party really wanted to fight for justice, and we 
issued a notice of violation. So there is a negotiation that's still pending. The case against Smart and Final is still ongoing. We have a case um, that has been settled with nonstop security services, the security company, and they have been compliant. Uh, they, they're in the process of paying their fine. They also have agreed to have training for their uh, team of security uh, staff members. And so we, you know, that's the outcome. And we want to just send a message to pay attention, um, to have folks pay attention to this problem. And again, many people of color, particularly African Americans, understand what it feels like to have your rights uh, violated in these spaces. And um, Dominique, I, I want to just take a moment to say there's a lot of interest uh, as it relates to civil rights and assuming that your civil rights are only violated by public entities. Right. Yes, <laughs> that happens. And I, on KBLA, you all talk about it all the time. But I want you to know that there are other ways that people can have their knees on our necks, and it is causing toxic stress. Um, people aren't doing things that they they would like to do, shopping at certain shops or thinking they need to go home and dress up before they go to a shop or make sure they leave their, their big purse at home before they go into certain shops. And so I want uh, folks to be uh, held accountable that are, you know, if you're doing wrong, I want people to be held accountable. And I don't even have a problem with the bag check policy. Just make sure that it is done across the board um, equitably. And uh, um, I imagine once this, you know, was a ten thousand dollar fine against the Smart and Final five thousand is what I'm reading here in the L.A. Times against the security company. I'm, I imagine that you got a lot more calls. People saying, "Oh, they're not just saying that they're right. enforcing." Right. Uh, and I want to make a, a clarification that the um, nonstop security services settled. Uh, at, at a lower rate, um, I believe it was uh, twenty five hundred dollars that they uh, in the settlement, and so we that case is closed, and so we want uh, folks to know that we were pleased with nonstop security services response. Um, they were took a accountability right away, and um, have been cooperative, and it, it's a smaller. Um, security services operation and again uh, our client um, the victim in this case was was fine with with those uh, dollar amounts and so I want to be really intentional to let you know that um, the security services company has uh, settled and closed things out with us but we uh, still are in discussions with smart and final mm. and so and as you said if anything else came out of this a private lawsuit or Yes. you know, some greater kind of action against Smart and Final, that that is completely separate right. from what you're doing. But did you know did you notice a surge in folks calling after this Smart and Final story came out? Yes. Yeah. Our phones have been ringing off the hook. We have a 160% increase in calls um, from just a month ago. So um, when you think about it, well, from February to March, we actually did the announcement in March, but from February to March, our numbers just shot up. And you now see how hard it is uh, to be in Los Angeles with the beautiful palm trees and all. A lot of times uh, your identity speaks before you do, even in Los Angeles. Yeah, and then you're hearing all of those stories, of course. Right. And I'll tell you... Uh, of course, we have a breakdown of where a lot of these cases are coming from. Um, a lot of them are in housing and employment. Um, but I want folks to know uh, that when you think about um, housing and employment, we are actually limited based on uh, jurisdiction. Um, of, and, uh, that, that means our authority of cases that we can bring. But I want folks to know that some of the stories I'm hearing um, – He's a little, you know, they're a little upset, upsetting, but I want to put folks on notice and particularly thinking about private schools, colleges, and universities. Mm. And, <clears throat> and I get me started. Right. Um, <laughs> I want, I want, I want folks to be intentional to make sure any rules that you're enforcing are enforced against all students equally. Um, I, 
the um I can tell you right now that yes. ain't happening but, so uh, <laughs> i can tell you that right now as a mama of a former private of a private school graduate no nope, not happening but yeah i think i think that's important it, it I, I do want to, we're about to go into news, traffic, and sports, but on that note, I do want to explore on the other side, you know, you're getting calls with the stories. I want to know what kind of reaction you're getting from businesses. You know, are are, are you hearing um, any movement on this? I would think I would be an eye-opener for some folks. We're talking with attorney Capri Maddox. She is the executive director of L.A. Civil Rights, and you're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominique De Prima when we come forward. Thank you for sharing a part of your Tuesday with us. It is April 16th. I'm Mike Moore. Now, here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is considering the best way to respond to Iran's response attack over the weekend. Monday, he called his war cabinet for the second time in less than 24 hours. The attack over the weekend resulted in no deaths and very little damage thanks to Israel and its allies helping strike down various missiles and drones. Team USA has its sights set on another gold medal this summer. According to ESPN, USA Basketball is finalizing its 2024 Paris Olympics roster. Now, the roster includes African-American stars Steph Curry, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, and Jason Tatum. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Save big during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off, plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. Valid through 417, appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. This This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. The Lakers are on the doorstep of making the NBA playoffs, but they're facing a difficult scenario. If they win their play-in game tonight in New Orleans, the Denver Nuggets are waiting for them in the first round. If the Lakers lose tonight, they'll play Friday night against Sacramento or Golden State for the privilege of a first-round matchup with Oklahoma City, the number one seed in the Western Conference. Either option presents a tough task for the Lakers. The L.A. Sparks, who haven't made the playoffs in three years, had the number two and number four picks in the WNBA draft last night. With the number two pick, the Sparks chose Stanford center Cameron Brink, the two-time National Defensive Player of the Year. At number four, the Sparks chose Tennessee forward Rakia Jackson, a third team All-American. The Sparks selected USC forward Mackenzie Forbes in the third round. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abvi. Again, sent bead story. Jim was at the laundromat when he heard his ear said Maraca, senor, but his nose said, hey, freshest scent ever. Following his nose, Jim found a man pouring a bottle of Gain scent beads into the washer. The scent, the freshness. Jim blurted, sir, your scent Maraca smell amazing. Actually, Jim, most noses call them Gain scent beads. Try Gain Scent Beads, way fresher than detergent alone. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you roll a Charmin, don't you soft on the party. This is more, so roll it back, everybody. Charmin's irresistibly soft and hella nice. My creep is always stuck. It's our party vibe. Special little things, someone takes me to fly. So what? Everybody wanna touch the sky. Charmin.
Charmin Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. I'm a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers Slip Resistant Work Shoes. Skechers Slip Resistant Work Shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Prima... Whoa! whoa! And that difference is why I wear Skechers Slip Resistant Work Shoes to keep me safe on my feet. Plus, they're easy to clean and have Skechers exclusive air-cooled memory foam for comfort throughout my shift. Get America's number one selling work shoe at Skechers.com, a Skechers store near you, or wherever work shoes are sold. Your floors can go from clean to dirty fast. From juice spills, whoops, to muddy paw prints, to little sticky finger marks. Good thing your Swiffer Wet Jet works fast too. Swiffer Wet Jet easily cleans everyday messes as quick as they happen. The next mess is right around the corner. <sighs> so grab your Swiffer Wet Jet and just spray, push, all clean. Heard any other talk radio lately that sounds anything like this? We didn't think so. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive KBLA Talk 1580. Yeah, KBLA Talk 1580 indeed. And you know, one of my favorite sayings is if you want to get something done, ask a busy person. <laughs> Capri Maddox is the executive director of L.A. Civil Rights. She's an attorney and a mom. So uh, if you want to get something done in L.A. Civil Rights, you ask uh, Capri Maddox. <laughs> ask mm-hmm. a busy person. Molly Bell's in the chat. She wants to know if you're any relationship to Kerman Maddox of Radio Back in the Day. Uh, she said uh, she used to call his radio show. All right. Well, Miss Molly Bell, you need to call me. I am Kermit Maddox's next of kin. Uh, he is my husband of 22 years, and we have a 17-year-old son, Casey Maddox, as well. Yes. Uh, whew, she mother of a teenager and running a department. Yes. Okay, so we were talking a little bit about, you know, how this Smart and Final case has impacted um, your call, Volumes up 160 percent. Everyone's calling. They're getting the message, telling these terrible stories. You mentioned education, even though it's you know you can only do so much in that area because of restrictions on what your portfolio is. But that we might want to be mindful um, as far as you know colleges and private schools. Yes. Um, in conduct, what other what other kind of observations or reactions are coming from the business side? Uh, at now that right. you've put this first case out. So we also are getting calls about uh, lending practices and banks uh, and how banks are handling bank accounts uh, with people from uh, underrepresented populations. And I, I find that, that is, those are you know very interesting inquiries. And I want to also let you know that we are limited when it comes to uh, employment and housing um, jurisdiction, but under commerce and in education, we can go all the way from age, citizenship, uh, your uh, uh, disability status, your employment status, your gender identity expression, uh, your uh, marital status, your um, primary language, race, religion, sexual orientation, uh, veteran status when it comes to commerce and education. And you can look up the list of ways and cases uh, we can uh, bring against uh, folks in commerce and education at our website at lasforeveryone.com. But I want you to know that in these spaces, we have a lot of flexibility. So I'm, again, just putting out a warning that folks in the um, – you know, with the private schools, uh, private schools, colleges, universities you need to make sure they're treating people equally. And also when it comes to banks, the banking industry is ripe for a, a lot of um, um, challenges in these spaces. And I, I'm, I think it's not right that African-Americans and Latinos pay hundreds of millions of dollars, almost a billion dollars each year in their mortgages more than their white counterparts with their with the same uh, credit scores and income um, um, capacity. So I want you all to know that um, this is something that is happening in America today, where where African Americans and Latinos are paying more for their mortgages, and we know how many things have gone wrong when it comes to housing. Um, Uh, equity and we know also how housing impacts every aspect of your life where your kids go to school the crime levels um, your generational wealth etc and it is 
um, past wrong that this continues to happen even after all we all folks fought for when it, when, it, when we're thinking about redlining and um, other things related to housing discrimination. Yeah, um, well said. Um, Polly in the chat says I was at both the Stay Black in LA event and the Los Angeles Civil Rights events recently that Ms. Capri was at. She's an amazing leader for our community. Thank you. are getting some love there. But I'm not, why, I'm not at all surprised to hear banks, you know, uh, that, that, you know, that's an area where you're getting, seeing a lot of complaints and a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of potential for improvement. Let me put it that yeah. way. This is such a huge project. You, you know, the prevention, the LA is for everyone as a concept, as bringing people together, but also as an enforcement piece. Okay. Um, what, what kind of budget, what kind of, what does it take to get this done? Right. Uh, well, first of all, you know, it takes all of us. We fight hate and discrimination on the offensive and defensive. So we have programs. We celebrate everyone's culture, of course. We have a LA's for Everyone campaign in 21 languages. Uh, we are actually going to reboot our LA for All campaign with a, another program. Uh, big project in the next uh, few months. And so maybe I'll come back on to talk a little bit about that um, a project. But I want you to know, um, when you think about what we do, it's a small group of people. We're talking, you know, 36 full-time employees, five uh, part-time employees, eight interns, uh, two consultants. Um, we, we pretty much have an operation of about 50 so uh, people. And I want you to know that we do this work for for the city of Los Angeles it covers four million people, and we are nonstop. Read our annual reports online. Read our newsletters. I want folks to sign up for our newsletters. By the way, uh, when you go to laisforeveryone dot com, there'll be a prompt to allow you to sign up for our newsletter. But I want you to know that we serve four million people. Um, we're on the ready to serve four million people uh, in the city of Los Angeles, and we we do it uh, for about five million dollars a year. Um, so five point two million dollars. Wow. I mean, when you think about a thirteen billion dollar, I think our annual budget for the city, mm -hmm. that's actually. I mean, it sounds a lot of money for me or you, but as a, as an enterprise that is, you know, tasked with protecting our civil rights and equity, and fighting pushing back against hate, um, I think that's, that's actually quite affordable. Right, right, right. Uh, and when you think about. Uh, when we were given this assignment in uh, 2020, there was a lot um, on the line. And I really want to thank Mayor Karen Bass for her continued support uh, for our work. And she's someone that really gets what we do and how we are making a difference here in the city of Los Angeles. Of course, some of you know Mayor, Mayor Karen Bass worked with community uh, the community coalition and um, you know understands you know supporting the community in so many ways and even as an elected and representing us very well in Congress um, she understands the needs of the community and of course as an African-American female she's been um, living um, in times where she's probably been discriminated against as well so I really appreciate uh, her support uh, and partnership and all all we do yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, same. She's got a lot on her plate, as do you. Mm. And uh, I love that the city of Los Angeles has, you know, tapped the talents of these powerful black women like yourselves, yourself and the mayor yes. uh, to deal with some of the biggest challenges that we have faced as a city and, you know, even sta on a statewide level. Right. So... <laughs> Can I just say one Absolutely. thing about Mayor Bass? I don't I don't know how she does it. I was with her last night after the State of the City speech. And, you know, just to have the responsibility of the entire city um, is is a big, big uh, feat. And here I am with one department of wondering which way is up. But I really admire and respect uh, Mayor Karen Bass. And um, I know she's been on your program many times. Yeah, she's, you know, she's in there. I think she's. In the job she was made for. Yes. You know what I mean? And talk about living in your purpose. But speaking about, you know, giant jobs, um, people might not realize that aside from going after civil rights, scoff laws, promoting equity, promoting unity through LAS for everyone and educating people and keeping us up to date on hate crimes and also being a, a resource to fight hate crimes, 
you have all these different commissions under the umbrella of LA Civil Rights. The Commission on Civil Rights, the Human Relations Commission, Commission on the Status of Women, Transgender Advisory Council, and the Reparations Advisory Commission are all under your leadership. Yes, we have 41 commissioners lifting a better Los Angeles with us. And just to let you know, the assignment, Gar- Mayor Garcetti, our former mayor, um, asked me to take on was only the enforcement. I was from the city attorney's office. It made sense. I do the enforcement. And during the interview, I opened my big mouth and said, well, why do we have the Commission on the Status of Women and the Human Relations Commission and the Transgender Advisory Council buried in the housing department? Uh, You know, some of these operations didn't have uh, funding, so they needed a place to put them quickly, and they put them in the housing department. And he said, yeah, you know, you're right. Um, You you know, and you need to do the enforcement. And, and then, of course, uh, reparations came on later on, uh, also during the uh, Garcetti administration, um, with the leadership and big push from um, council member, former council member uh, Mark Ridley Thomas and uh, Kern Price, as well as Marquise Harris Dawson, really pushed to have reparations be a part of our department as well at a later date. And we are happy uh, to, to do it. I mean, I'm descendant of, of slaves. So, you know, if not me, who, right? So I said yes to that as well. And and then we had the Office of Race, uh, Racial Equity that needed a home. And so we just made sure that we were all working together. And I, I really wanted the Office of Racial Equity to be with us as well. And we're doing a lot of great programming work in those spaces Um, upper mobility programming to help people get to the middle class and beyond doing report backs and policy analysis on equity issues in the city, as well as um, making sure that we're giving out uh, out a a large sum of money to community based organizations through our peace and healing centers, as well as participatory budgeting. And by the way, you can go to repair.lacity.org to learn more about uh, our participatory budgeting programs. Talking with attorney Capri Maddox and you, and we are talking L.A. Civil Rights, a model for the nation. She is the executive director of that department. Continuing our conversation when we come forward, it is KBLA Talk 1580, 40 acres and a mic. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. Are you facing an unexpected financial emergency? You need WeFixMoney.com. WeFixMoney.com can help you get up to $3,000 fast. WeFixMoney.com is free to use, available 24-7, and has an A rating with the Better Business Bureau. Go to the name you trust, WeFixMoney.com. If you need emergency cash up to $3,000 for bills or anything else, type WeFixMoney.com directly into your browser. That's WeFixMoney.com. Eggs are a staple in our diets, and there's only one egg with more delicious farm-fresh taste plus superior nutrition. Eggland's Best. With more vitamins, including six times more vitamin D and ten times more vitamin E, plus 25% less saturated fat than ordinary eggs. Available in so many delicious varieties. Classic, cage-free, and organic. Eggland's Best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. Tips to help improve your credit score in 2024. Establishing credit is an important key to achieving financial health, but building a credit history from scratch can feel challenging since you need credit to build credit. First, what does it mean to build credit? All consumers have a score between 300 and 850. You want your score to be as high as possible as lenders look at your credit score to make loan and credit decisions. A good credit score shows you have a track record of borrowing money responsibly. Remember, it's never too late to build or rebuild your credit. This segment is sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. Imagine with me here for a minute the most beautiful panoramic setting. Maybe it's an endless ocean, waves crashing on a beach, or a crystal clear mountain lake, peaceful and quiet. Or maybe it's just little kids playing in the park down the street. Wherever your imagination takes you, now imagine right smack in the middle of this perfect picture, a piece of litter. Just one piece 
right there in the middle of it all. Doesn't exactly fit, does it? In fact, even though it's just one piece, now it's all you can see. That one piece ruins everything. And that's the thing about litter. It doesn't take much to ruin everything. One thing's for sure, it simply does not belong anywhere in California. So here's the good news. If we work together, we will change it. We don't have to let litter, even just one piece, ruin your perfect picture. Not anymore, not ever again. Clean California, zero litter is the goal. Brought to you by Caltrans and CleanCA.com. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate loses and love wins. Man, there's so much going on. You know, L.A. is so huge as a city. Uh, you think uh, Valley, that's still L.A. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It's a bunch of little cities that are all L.A. Um, and the L.A. Civil Rights Department serves all of those. Um, and, you know, you you have, as we pointed out, all these different commissions, really important stuff, um, all under this department, L.A. Civil Rights. It seems like we're starting to see more reparations commissions set up. We're starting to see some civil rights departments in other cities. But what, as far as like aggregating all this stuff in one hub and, and taking on all these different uh, projects, is there any, any one, any city doing anywhere close to what we're yeah. doing here? So we are very grateful uh, that we have other partners doing great work. You know, s- some operations focus on women or others may focus on um, enforcement, bringing cases against folks that violate your civil rights. But no one is doing all that we are doing at LA Civil Rights. You can take a globe, spin it, put your <laughs> finger down anywhere. And even if they are the best in this space uh, or have been around a long time, no one is doing all we are doing in this space. Some people only fight hate. Some people are intentional to do participatory budgeting to give money to community based organizations or some people do report backs um, and equity papers. We uh, released a a paper just a little while ago, about a year ago, on missing and murdered black women and girls. Um, you know, black women are less than 5% of the population, by the way, but we are one third of the folks that go missing and murdered in the city of Los Angeles. And this was a study uh, that came to us by, um, the request came to us from Council Member Price. And I want you to know that it was in response to what happened to Tony Theus, a uh, 16-year-old girl that was murdered um, here in Los Angeles. And I, what, I'm, what, what I really want to, you know, back get back to is to let you know that no one is doing all the work we are doing, um, even upper mobility programming, making sure that we can help people get into the middle class and beyond by doing law day trainings, medical day trainings to teach people how to get in the law school, teach people how to get in the medical school, help people become homeowners. Um, that's been one of the, the my, my highest highs of having this department is having an African American woman tell me, i thought I had to move out of the state to become a homeowner and she called to say and now I am driving to pick up the keys to my new home so um Mm. you know I'm very (laughs) I'm very grateful and I'm very grateful to God to be able to do this work Uh, I'm a member of First Sammy Church and our motto is uh, first to serve and it's something that um is infused in what I do Uh, it's particularly thinking about the um late Chip Murray, um, someone that said, I'd rather wear out than rust out. And we are (laughs) doing all we can um, to wear out uh, hate and discrimination in Los Angeles and, and create a better Los Angeles for all. Um, I, you know, I wasn't planning to go here, but since you, you raised your church and, and, uh, probably the most famous pastor ever to lead that church, Pastor Murray, who made his transition recently is, I guess the services are coming up on the 27th, the 27th. Yeah. Weekend after this. Um, is there anything you would want to say about a Reverend Murray who certainly is in the same, was always in the same space in terms of creating an LA that could be for everyone. Right. Uh, he was ahead of his time. Um, you know, in thinking about the AIDS epidemic and, you know, he's one of the first pastors to, you know, hand out condoms and talk about safe sex. He was one of the first pastors to talk about um, corporation support in the, the faith-based world. Um, 
thinking about, you know, enterprise project, you know, we think about fame renaissance. And of course, this work uh, continues with the leadership now with Robert and Ann Shaw, our new pastors that are uh, both dynamic as well. And we are um, very, very grateful for the stability we had with Pastor Boyd, our uh, recent, uh, the most, re- one of the um, more recent pastors that we had um, at First AME Church. The, the work the work of this uh, faith entity has gone on for over 150 years. Mm -hmm. And it is, as many people know, uh, a part of our civic uh, support really comes from the faith-based community. Uh, There was a time where church was the only place we could learn about politics. And um, still we have a number of esteemed um, elected officials that go to our church and are members of our church. By the way, Heather Hudd, a council member uh, for the 10th district, she's also a member of First AME. So uh, the civic community definitely has a strong connection to First AME and um, sending love and strength uh, to the first to serve uh, a family as we mourn the loss of our beloved uh, Cecil Chip Murray. Yeah. Um, and this idea of, you know, pushing against hate, the L.A. is for everyone. Uh, we, you and I have had many conversations about how it, it seems to be somehow obscured that as hate crimes rise, it's always black people who are the primary targets. Right. Um, but there are many other targets as well. I saw on Monday there was a press conference uh, about a guy, a suspect named Henry Nall Kemper, who was making threats against um, the L.A. Pride Parade. He said he was going to um, set a building on fire using an accelerant. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was making threats against a Latino trans organization, a Latina, I guess I should say, um, and called Trans Latina. Uh, They got a bomb threat. Um, And Mm -hmm. these are the kinds of things that you also have to respond to as well. Right. Uh, You should know that since we've been keeping records, uh, the African-American population is number one when it comes to hate crimes. Uh, However, I want you to know that Hispanic women are the number one victims um, when you think about um, when you think about women being victims of hate crimes. Um, And I want you to know that we're in a space where the transgender community is under attack. Some of the most violent hate crimes uh, happen against uh, trans women, particularly transgender women of color. Mm. Um, And the trans, uh, the trans Latina coalition really faced, um, you know, some harsh, harsh um, bomb threats and um, some death threats, uh, in, in the series of incidents were to happen from April 15th all the way uh, through the month of June. Um, as you mentioned, um, the Pride Parade was um, another place where uh, their attack would was threatened. And we wanted to send a message yesterday in partnership um, with the whole of government, the DA's office, district attorney's office, uh, the folks at L.A. Human Relations Commission, uh, for the county, um, really put together the LA versus hate coalition to send a strong message with LAPD as well to say hate has no home in Los Angeles and Los Angeles County and the whole of government is coming together to make sure that we protect all communities, which includes our transgender family. Mm, well said, uh, Capri Maddox, well said. And yeah, we, I guess we're going to have to do maybe a show on, on another day because yes. there's so many questions and, and things I've been made aware of. But if you would just quickly um, remind me, repair the um, the participatory budgeting yes. website. Uh, repair.lacity.org. And we are doing participatory budgeting and that space is in very, very grateful to Allison Wilhite and Diamond James who run uh, that program for us to make sure that we give real people real power over real money in the city of Los Angeles. Yay. And also if you're looking to report 
uh, discrimination or such, LAisforeveryone.com. Or if you just want to find out more about the department, the programs, all the things going on, LAisforeveryone.com. Or 213-978-1845. Sorry to the people that have to answer that phone. 213-978-1845. Happy birthday, Wendy. <laughs> Happy birthday, Wendy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Attorney Capri Maddox, thank you so much for all the work you're doing. It's all much right. appreciated. Thank you so much. Keep the faith and keep the fight, Los Angeles. Thank you, KBLA. I'm going to do a a Cecil Murray quote for my closing quote today. He says, talk without being offensive, listen without being defensive, and always leave even your adversary with your dignity, for if you don't, they'll spend the rest of their lives working to make you miserable. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wish I would have read that quote maybe 10, 20 years ago. (laughs) Tavis Smiley's up next. He's got a great lineup for you today and of course i will see you on all the social medias at kbla 1580 or me at the prima radio until tomorrow one love kbla 1580 santa monica thank you for sharing a part of your tuesday with us it is april 16th i'm mike moore now here's the latest from the black information network Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is considering the best way to respond to Iran's response attack over the weekend. Monday, he called his war cabinet for the second time in less than 24 hours. The attack over the weekend resulted in no deaths and very little damage thanks to Israel and its allies helping strike down various missiles and drones. Team USA has its sights set on another gold medal this summer. According to ESPN, USA Basketball is finalizing its 2024 Paris Olympics roster. Now, the roster includes African-American stars Steph Curry, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, and Jason Tatum. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Save big during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off, plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. Valid through 417, appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers are on the doorstep of making the NBA playoffs, but they're facing a difficult scenario. If they win their play-in game tonight in New Orleans, the Denver Nuggets are waiting for them in the first round. If the Lakers lose tonight, they'll play Friday night against Sacramento or Golden State for the privilege of a first-round matchup with Oklahoma City, the number one seed in the Western Conference. Either option presents a tough task for the Lakers. The L.A. Sparks.